Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Professor Nicholas Oregon from the University of Nottingham, and I'm delighted to have the Titch Nowak team. So, the treatment of intracerebral hemorrhage in patients on non vitamin K oral ant anticoagulants with tranexamic acid. I think that I got that right. So, I'd just like to introduce you to uh, Professor Philip Lira, um, uh, Professor Stefan Engleter and uh, Dr. David Sefi Edge, and apologies if I pronounce any of those wrong. So congratulations on presenting uh, the results of this study. I just wonder if you could first of all just introduce the study and explain to us uh, what, what you were looking at in the Tich Nowak study. Yes, thank you, Nikki. So um, we did a randomized controlled, uh, placebo controlled uh, trial um, in six uh, Swiss stroke centers during five years uh, between 2016 and 2021. And uh, we included patients with a intracerebral hemorrhage associated with the use of one of the novel or direct oral anticoagulants, so rivaroxaban, apixaban, edoxaban, or dabigatran, and the last intake within 48 hours. And patients were enrolled up to 12 hours after symptom onset of intracerebral hemorrhage. And patients were randomized to receive either tranexamic acid, um, which was one gram as a bolus followed by a one gram over eight hours uh, infusion or to a matching placebo. And the main outcome was hematoma expansion measured on 24 hours follow up uh, CT scan. Okay, and what did you find? <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work, five years. So um, we enrolled uh, 63 patients during this period. Uh, from 109 patients which were planned. We had to stop the study um, pr prior to, to reaching the, the target sample size because of exhausted um, funding. Um, so we enrolled 31 patients in the placebo group and 32 patients in the tranexamic acid group. And actually the hematoma expansion rate was virtually um, uh, the same in both cohorts. 45% in patients on placebo, uh, on placebo and 46% in patients on tranexamic acid with a p-value of 0 0.8998. So uh, there was no, no difference in the main outcome, unfortunately. Okay. okay. And did you look at any subgroups? Yes, Nikki, this is an excellent question. And what the first um, a glance looks like a kind of boring neutral trial. I think the, the most important and the most intriguing findings are the subgroups. We learned that it matters if there is interventricular uh, blood extension uh, and if there is also um, early treatment, treatment onset matters. We had uh, just looked at just the patients looking, uh, having treatment onset beyond, uh, earlier than six hours. There was an, a, a rather good result. And also if there was interventricular uh, hemorrhage and if the blood pressure was rather low, low, then there seemed to be a potential benefit. I think this is intriguing news. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. So why do you think that is with the intraventricular hemorrhage? That's an, that's an interesting question. I think these are probably the, the patients who could gain the most just by how the, the drug works. But to be honest, I, we do not have uh, understood that in, uh, in detail yet. And the blood pressure finding fits with the results of uh, other tranexamic yeah. acid studies and um, was was it was it actually the baseline blood pressure that you looked at yeah. or yeah it's what it was, it was a baseline blood pressure and what kind of the cutoff was 170 and okay below okay. Uh, it was better than the bus but details of the uh, the uh, subgroup analysis will be presented at the at the conference in more okay. and did you look at the location kind of low location versus deep location Yes, uh, uh, there was no um, interaction which, uh, okay. which there seemed okay. to be of any interest regarding of, uh, of the, the benefit of uh, tranexamic acid. Okay, so interesting subgroups. Where do you want to go next? What's the future plans for this? Do you think this is still a viable question? Oh, I think so. And I think just uh, this might be interesting for you as uh, the PI of the... Uh, of the uh, teach a free trial and it would be really interest intriguing to have such patients that means the patients having an interventional blood associated with an, a NOAC 
could be part of that trial. And if you look in particular to these subgroups, uh, if they benefit from, from the drug uh, in, in this respect. Okay. And presumably with a shorter time window than the 12 hours um, would be what your subgroup suggests. Yeah. yeah. Therefore, it, it would, I think it would perfectly fit in, in, in your trial. I mean, just yeah, I, I mean, I, I think this is obviously an important group. I think, I mean, how common is how common is hemorrhage now on, on NOx? Do we know that? So uh, we can we, we we have looked up this in the Swiss Stroke Registry data, which is a national uh, data set of patients, and you and you actually see that um, there is always roughly twenty percent of patients having a hemorrhage which are on anticoagulants, and this um, the the anticoagulant preference switched uh, between the last five years. So we have actually now. Um, of these 20%, 80% are now NOAC bleeds and only 20% are VKA bleeds. So it's becoming more and more frequent. So it's a big population with no effective treatment at the moment. Yeah, okay. And in your trial, did patients get uh, reversal agents, antidotes? So we, we allowed um, additional use of other hemostatic drugs in, the, in, the, in our study. So tranexamic acid was just an add-on therapy. Um, the study was conducted in Switzerland, and during the, the study period, Andexan Alpha for anti 10 a inhibitor um, was not available. So there was no patient who actually got uh, Andexan Alpha. Okay. And as uh, Dabigatran has virtually no, um, it's very, very low market share in Switzerland, there was also no patient on Dabigatran. So at the end, no patient in our study received any specific reversal agent, but of course, uh, Protron being complex concentrate was allowed, and about two thirds of the patients actually received, in addition, PCC. Um, uh, and again, we would like to point out that uh, there are some interesting results uh, of a subgroup analysis for patients with PCC and uh, tranexamic acid, which are going to be presented at ESA. Uh, okay. Another yeah. important point, as you mentioned earlier, is time onset to treatment. Actually, we had almost 60% of patients within six hours. And this, in this subgroup, we have a more favorable outcome for the tranexamic acid patients. I think this fits quite well with other study results. And so if we would design another study with NOAC for NOAC treatment, we would select or try to apply treatment as fast as possible, similarly to ischemic strokes. I think okay. this is important as it's quite in line with other study results, as you yeah. are aware. And um, what do you think the barriers are for that? What, 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 why is it difficult? Do, One do think... point can be that the delay that patients comes in is because it's progressing so at the beginning, patient may wait, will it be better or worse? But all of a sudden it becomes worse, but this costs time. So it's not the abrupt onset like the ischemic strokes, so it's the progression that yeah. really makes some delay. But we have anyway, we have more than half of patients have got treatment within six hours. I think that's reassuring, isn't it, to show that even as part of, of a clinical trial across multiple centres, you can enrol patients and treat them quickly enough. So congratulations on that. That's really a fantastic effort. Is there anything else you wanted to finish by telling people? I think one of the major findings that we had in this trial was that um, the rate of hematoma expansion is really high, 45% for all patients even if we consider that the time window inclusion was up to 12 hours after symptom onset and even 48 hours after last intake was rather large, still this hematoma expansion rate is really, really high. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to gain in this patient population with effective hemostatic therapies. And um, I think there is uh, much need for further randomized controlled trials. I think we present the first randomized controlled trial in this specific study population um, showing that it is feasible with an inclusion rate of two to three patients per year per center, at least in Switzerland uh, from, from our study, which 
um, is the basic for planning future trials or for adjusting ongoing trials to, to propose better treatments for this kind of patient. And, and as you say, a lot to gain and potentially not much to lose if the drug appears safe. Um, well, congratulations. Sorry. And if I may add on, I think it's important not to be discouraged by the neutral result overall. I think we have learned a lot what could be the, uh, the patients and the characteristics where to, to put the next steps on. And I think we have learned that time matters a lot, which is in line of, of previous that, that the interventricular extension matter and that blood pressure matter and putting them together. I think this, this uh, opens up new avenues for kind of the treatment of this. And, and this is the first trial in this, uh, in this entity. Yeah. This is no, absolutely. I mean, I think congratulations. This was a very important trial that needed doing. I don't think any of us think any of these trials on their own can answer the question, but this provides really helpful information for where we need or you need to go next. So congratulations and thank you for sharing the results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.